well, well, we're here, here. Yes, we are. Back in the main event slot, right? But I mean, not a short notice, built around you from the start. I mean, you wanted these moments like this. Is it, is it, is it everything you dreamed it would be? What's the excitement level like for you right now? Uh, first of all, I be watching like all the little Dana stuff. Bro, you're fucking killing it, okay? I told you you were fucking talented. Bro, you keep Dana going with the right questions and stuff. It's not no bullshit. Like, I really like what you're doing, brother. Keep that shit going. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that, man. And now, what was your question now? You here in this headlining slot, man. I know you always wanted these big spots, and you kind of got forced into one. But, I mean, now you're getting these big bookings, right? I mean, what's, what's the feeling like for you? Yeah, it's, it's amazing to be uh, the main event, you know, to get that honor, um, get the poster. This is something on my bucket list. So I'm like, hell yeah, like I finally got to put these. I'm going to get like two or three of them in to put in each one of my homes. And so it's a blessing to be uh, a main event. And, they, and thank you to my company for picking me. They know that I'm going to come in and end the night raw. Yeah. And the other thing that I've been noticing about you is the messages of positivity that you've been sending out there, not just for me, but for people in general, you know. And I just wonder, you know, why that continues to remain such an important thing. I think it, it, at one point in your life you almost felt like there was a chip on your shoulder all the time. And now I feel like you're really like, trying to keep people to not be in that same place you were? I don't know, brother. Like, I guess just, it's always been my message. I think that, like, maybe when I was a little youngster, a little more, you know, I had a little, that little thug shit, you know, I was, I got that street shit in me, you know, and so I'm sorry if I was that way when I was first coming in, but it's always been this way. It's like, just to love people, impact people, touch people, you know, like, that's always been my message. It's always been my thing I do behind the scenes. Has that become more important to you almost even than what you accomplished in the cage? Fuck yeah, fuck yeah. Um, because that cage, you're in there for 15 minutes, you know? Um, but what we do outside the cage, that's what my dad's always told me, the biggest lesson that he, one of the biggest lessons he's told me is, hey, it's not about what you do in the cage, it's about what you do outside of it too, you know? It's going to be most impactful. And so that's only 15 minutes in there, but maybe I could tell you something that lasts a lifetime, you know? And, and you go like, hey, all right, I got it, you know? And so, I don't know. That said, the more success you have at the cage, the bigger the platform gets. So let's talk about the matchup you got with Grant Dawson. Um, what do you think of him overall as an opponent? I mean, you've seen pretty much everything there is out there at this point, but what do you think of him as a fighter? Man, I didn't even know who that guy was. I never even heard of him, you know? Um, and that goes to his body of work. I think the issue is that, like, it's been kind of boring, you know? And... And he's been in apex fighting. But had he been around these crowds, he would already feel the pressure from the crowd. They would let him know, we don't really like to see what you're doing, you know. Um, even though sometimes he's got some finishes, so it's like, cool, yeah. But it's a snore fest. And so it's going to be a real test for me is more so make a boring guy exciting, you know. That's the real fight. Yeah. I mean, I think, look, that's what people are looking at this is, right, is the one guy that's going to try to grapple against the one guy that's got the slick striking on the feet. I mean, I know everybody's a well-rounded martial artist, but is that basically the type of fight you're expecting to see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's basically is. Hey, uh, but that's the thing, too. I'm going to do it all. You know, I'm going to do it all. If I have to wrestle with this kid, I'm going to show him. You thought I wasn't going to come and wrestle you? You thought I wasn't ready? I came ready, kid. Nice. Uh, we know you're going to go out there and put on a show for sure. Uh, the last thing for me. What other boxes are there for you to tick? You know what I mean? I know you said you're focused more on growing the things outside of the cage, but you've always said, I got these things I want to do. I want to get these before. I... What other boxes are there for you to tick? I was thinking about that today. I'm like, man, all right, I ticked off that box now. What box will be left? I'd probably say maybe the Ultimate Fighter. You know, we're hosting the Ultimate Fighter. I think I'll bring some new interesting shit to it, you know, so maybe doing something like that. Um, besides that, it's still the same goal. When I got in this game, I got in here to – I was a poor kid with nothing, and all I wanted was a home. And so I bought my first home, and me and my girl got in a fight, and she would always kick me out of it because I put the house under her name. And so I always get kicked out of my own home. So then I bought another one. I'm like, all right, all I'm going to do is pay for this one off. But then somewhere along that journey, I had three kids. And so with the three kids, I had to get three homes to take, sure, take care of all of them. I wanted to, my gift to them is, hey, this is my gift to you. I ain't got much. I don't make a, a lot of money, but, and my dad didn't give me anything. I may not be able to pay for your college and all that stuff and everything, but at least I could do is give you a home that I didn't have. I had to go to 50 different homes, you know, live homeless, be this and that and do this. You'll never have to worry about someone else taking your home from you. Here's this. It's paid off. You'll always have a, plot, a spot to stay.
is, is, I said last question. I see. Is that your proudest accomplishment, right? Like, it's not necessarily like, you know, the traditional American family, white picket fence, we're all together, you know, but, but that, that they're all taken care of and they don't have to worry the way you did? I wish it would have went the American way, you know, <laughs> but my life is chaotic, you know, and, and I'm doing the best I can, and this is the best thing I can give back. I'm glad it, that I can still be here to, because most people don't make it this long. I think I'm 10 years, almost 11, or I don't know where I'm at with this in this game. 46 fights. A lot of guys don't make it this far, and so I'm blessed for every day I get. Hey, Bobby. Uh, I just want to go back to your win over Tony, man. Uh, you know, obviously, we all love your boxing, but how did it feel to show off your grappling and put to sleep the guy who uh, is known for his grappling? Yeah, no one thought I had grappling. Nobody understands my uh, wrestling or my grappling. I just don't really show them, you know. Um, me and Gaethje both understand that, like, uh, it's not really what – the crowd wants to see and we understand that and we're going to give you what the crowd wants we're trying to be superstars we're trying to give 110 percent to what it is that fans came for we're here to sell out shows we're here to impact people and it's not that time for wrestling like that wrestling like if you can do it and do it in an exciting way cool but being boring that's not that's not me was it nice to add adding another legend to your resume yeah yeah to get that now i feel like Two legends fought each other. Now I'm the last. I'm the last of a dying breed, you know? Everyone's gone. Nate's gone. Jorge's gone. I'm the last of the OGs. Um, I just want your thoughts on Tony booking another fight. He's fighting Patty Pimblett. I know that you wanted to fight Patty. Um, what do you think of that matchup? I used to want to fight Patty, you know? Um, my thing is this. I got the name. Just like this Dawson kid. I got the name. You guys are fighting me for my name, and, and you want to get your recognition, and that's cool. But uh, when it comes to that, back to the Patty and the Tony stuff, like I tell everybody, it's like it's it's story writing for the UFC. They know how to write stories, and so they're writing this story, and everybody's story goes differently. Like some people are like, well, why didn't you make it, or why didn't you do this and that? The story is not written exactly like that. There's everybody got their own position to play, and so like most of the time, you don't see someone who's gonna come on a six lost streak fight someone who's on a six win streak but the story writing is going there and they want to build that kid so they would keep him away from me so they could build him it's too risky um so the story writing they're just writing the story and my story is a little bit different i fought everybody who came in front of me i didn't pick and choose i never got to say no that you know if, if anything i got injured but besides that i fought everybody they put in front of me my story is a a true chaotic mess that's like, oh, well, he thought he was going to be gone. We thought he did this. He lost that one. He came out. But he came back, and he did. I just thought everybody put in front of me. I wanted to ask you about Tony. Obviously, you've been in there. You beat him. Uh, he's on the sixth fight losing streak. I'm sure you don't really care about another man's, you know, journey in this sport. But, like, being in there with him, like, do you feel like his his time's coming to an end? Like, like, like what do you think? First of all, I do care um, because we're, we're the – we're the old guys. We're the we're the legends. Like you want to always see, root for him. You always want to see him be be, be good. You know, I, don't, I I love Tony, and it was hard for me to fight him. You know, because everywhere I went, somebody told me that's my favorite fighter. And it's like, man, I really love you, Bob, but I love him more. You know, so it's like, hey, it, it sucked. You know, to have to fight that guy. But I would love to. I want to see him go. I want to see him be positive. I want to see him win. I want to see him have all the great things that he deserves. What do you think of uh, Nate versus Jake? Nate versus Jake. Um, staged, you know. Um, what do you expect when you're fighting heavy, that high up? These guys have all the right uh, things in favor for them, you know. Everything's in their favor. It's supposed to go that way. But I just think that he got that lucky shot besides that. I, feel like I saw Nate putting the pressure on him, beating him, except for, you know, he got that little drop and it's like, oh, fuck. You know, they're going to give it to him. Thanks, Bobby. Bobby, over here. After your first UFC main event against Islam Mahachev, you mentioned in your post-fight interview that you'd rather not main event again, given that you just want to get the fight over with. Seems like you adjusted your view on that. What changed? Um, I think that when I fought Islam, I had never been used to the main event. And so, like, it was 10 days notice. Then it just, like, it was so invasive, my privacy. Like, these guys are riding around. They want to get in the car with me. And they were all these cameras. I'm like, man, I can't even talk to my coaches. It was just like, 
it was too much for me. Like, ugh, I don't like that, you know? Or everybody's in my face. Everybody's like, what, what, what's going on? What are you going on? I'm like, oh, shit. This is what it takes to be a main event. And so I was kind of like thrown off by that part of it. But after that, I'm like, oh, I, mean, I, can, I can get used to it now. It'll give me a little more time to get prepared and stuff. So let's do it. In that same interview, you also mentioned that you learned, you learned a lot about the wrestling that Islam has in his arsenal. Are those takeaways going to help you in this matchup with Grant as he also brings a wrestling-heavy game plan? Yeah, yeah. I just felt like I didn't have the proper time to prep for Islam. You know, um, I was sitting on the couch. My girl's supposed to have surgery. I'm smoking a blunt, you know. I'm smoking weed, and they're like, hey, get up and fight again. I'm like, oh, great. Fuck it, let's do it, you know. And so I think that this one's going to be a lot different now that I have the time to, prep, to prepare. And uh, who would you like to coach against on The Ultimate Fighter if you get your wish granted? Hmm. Hmm. Who's got spunk? Who's got flair? Who's got, like, I would say Patty, but because he's, like, he thinks he's kind of cool, you know? He's a weirdo, but let me see. Who else got some spunk? Drew is too nice. Drew is too nice, and, and I'd like to fight him again, but he's such a nice guy. You can't fucking hate that guy at all. He's, I wouldn't even know. Let them pick. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you. Bobby, thanks for taking the time. And shout out to the three houses. That's fantastic to set up the family, man. Awesome. It almost seems like you're wearing a house now with all the jewelry. <laughs> you said to, you have to make a boring uh, fighter exciting. How do you do that without taking risks and giving too, too much openings? Um, I feel this way about a few fighters that I had to fight. Like, like when I fought Pat Healy, he was similar. When I fought uh, Jacob Volkman, boring to me. But I got fight of the night, so I took a boring fighter and I made it exciting. You know, um, Clay Guida's I would say more of an exciting fighter, but he had a little bit of that. And I'm like, could it be one of those snore fests that could go bad? You know, and I did it again. So, um. That's just a true fight. Is like those guys are like they just want to win. They're not interested in doing anything bigger than that. Being like, I want to have a catalog of great fights where you can go back and watch the shit from ten years from now. Some of these fights, like I, I never even heard of the kid. I never watched him. I never was like, oh my god, who's this this Grant Gosling guy? You know, I didn't even hear about it until he got into my face. And is um, at all that a dangerous guy who wants to come take that? Bobby King, King brand and, and use it and parlay that into bigger fights, more main events? Um, he can't take that. He can't take that. All he could do is do his job and, and, and be him. And it, he's done that so far, and it's not been working. So there's, like like I said, again, a story. I, I don't know how many win streak he's on, and you would think that they would be promoting him, but the, the powers that be are like, uh, he's missing something. He hasn't got that yet. He's still missing something to – Put yourself on that limelight, you know? Islam started doing some certain things that got him like, oh. But then again, they say he got it after fighting me. So he's like, well, Islam got it after fighting me. I'll fight Bobby Green, and then I'll get it too. All right, man. Can't wait to see it on Saturday, and good luck. I just want to follow up on the tough thing. It wouldn't be the same weight class, but I feel like maybe you and Kevin Holland coaching against each other would be pretty fun. Uh, oh, man. Kevin, Kevin. Kevin's the shit. Kevin's the shit. I don't want to talk bad about no bad, no black man. Me and Kevin have run into each other. We've had ups and downs, and I just want nothing but greatness for Kevin. That's it. I just want to see him do great. I'm just happy the guy's a fucking legend. He does. He impacts the crowd really great. I just want to see nothing but great for Kevin. Thank you. Is the plan still to fight Jim Miller at UFC 300? That's a great question. Man, I was thinking about doing this. Like, my plan was to fight this fight and fight one more in December. Right now, I got the most active. Nobody's fighting more than me right now. I'm fighting. I'm putting them out. Old as I am, 46 fights, 40 whatever, nobody's still doing it like me. I'm trying to pop one off, and I'm the most active. How are you young guys letting me beat you? You know what I mean? How are you letting me get more work than you guys? I should be banged up and at the house, you know? And so... I wanted to do one in December since I bought this house in Vegas now. I'm a Vegas resident. I'm trying to get my little ID and stuff, my little Vegas ID. So I want to do a show for Vegas before we left, maybe at the end of the year. Try to, even if I got to headline the, the, the prelims, because I know they already got it all full up. You know, I'll take the prelims. I don't care. As um, long as I'm getting my money and I'm getting close to my goal, which is make sure all my kids have a home.
Well, what made you move out to Vegas? Uh, uh, everybody says it. it's taxes. <laughs> it's taxes. California is crazy, you know? California is crazy. The money I got to pay in taxes. So I'm like, man, I'm going to move my business and everything out to, uh, to Vegas. So I'll be half the year in, uh, in Vegas and half the year in California. Thanks, man. By the way, I'd sign up to watch you and Poirier on top. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. That's dope. Poirier got spunk. Yeah, he got it. He got it. I'll give it to him. I feel like Holloway as well. You both take fighting in your boxing. And then, hey, he's got the record for the most amount of hits in his division. I got the record in my division. That'd be a sick-ass fight. Holloway's dope. I got nothing but respect for those type of guys like that. That'd be sick. And then we won't both talk to each other. We're going to talk shit, too. And beat each other up? That's a great ass fight. All good. All good. Last thing I want to say, I know he's going to be watching. Dawson's going to be watching. He came up on me right now, he tried to shake my hand. But he came up on the side of me real quick. I didn't even notice him. Like, oh, fuck. And he, he hit me with the nice guy. Good luck stuff, you know? And I wanted to be respectful. I wanted to, because he made a comment. He said, Bobby Green's going to try to get in my head. I've never tried to get in anyone's head. I don't know where they got that from. I'm just a truth teller. And to be honest, if you start that shit, then I bring that type of shit to you. So I'll be listening to what y'all say. And when y'all say something disrespectful, I just go over there and say, hey, oh, I'm going to bring my shit. And I just, like with Tony, I got labeled as a bad guy. But Tony said he saw fear in my eyes. So when we locked up, I'm over here. He looks at me yelling at him, yeah, 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 yelling at him. I'm like, oh, I look like a bad guy. But I'm like, you started it. You brought that. And I'm just here to set the truth, you know? And so Dawson, I'm watching the fights with us and a little uh, video, or whatever. And he was in the cage. And he's in the cage and he's sparring or he's hitting mitts. And he's like, come on, Bobby. Come on. You like that? I'm ahead. Uh, uh, uh. I'm like, what? The only problem was I wasn't there. So where was I at? when? So when you see this, Dawson, I want you to do exactly what you were saying in that cage. When I'm there, I didn't see you. I wasn't there. You were calling my name and stuff. No, 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 no. Do that same thing in the ring with everybody there when it counts.